Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in. Today's video is a discussion regarding a very common question we get from viewers, which is, do we have any regrets trading in the fifth wheel toy hauler yeah. for a class A motorhome? And we're going to discuss the pros and cons of each coming up. Okay, we've been full-timing for almost two years now, and for those who have been following along, you know that we traded in a fifth wheel toy hauler for a class A motorhome. The question is, how do we feel about that decision yeah, now? almost two years later. By the way, if you're new here, our channel is about RVing and motorcycling. So if that's something you might be interested in, give us a look. And if you enjoy the content, consider subscribing. We'd love to have you come along for the ride. And for all the viewers, don't forget to leave a comment on today's subject. We'd love to hear from you. As you might imagine, living in an RV is different than just using it occasionally, like a couple of weeks per year or just on the weekends, yeah. right? I mean, you're in, a 20, you're in there 24-7, and because we live in it every day, the space can get very small. Yeah, no doubt about that. And with that in mind, let's talk about those pros and cons of full-time living in a Class A versus a fifth-wheel toy hauler. Now, keep in mind that we're talking about the particular floor plan of our Class A and the particular floor plan of the fifth wheel we had. Right. Also keep in mind that these are simply our opinions regarding things that matter to us. Uh, you may have other needs and wants and that's okay. So first category up for discussion is working from the RV in a place where we spend most of our time and that is at the workstation. Yeah. In our Class A motorhome, I'm at the workstation 8 to 12 hours a day and many of those hours is spent on phone calls or in Zoom meetings. I also spend a good deal of time at the same workstation editing videos, planning our trips. Granted, I don't have a real job anymore like Clay, but what I do requires some level of concentration and I really need a quiet place to work. But with Clay's constant conversations happening just on the other side of the table, it remains a real challenge. In fact, many times if Daryl receives a call while I am on the phone or on a video call, yeah. he has to step outside to answer it so he doesn't interrupt my call. Yeah, that's true. Now there are ways that I can mitigate my issue, like working outside when the weather permits, working around her schedule early in the morning or late into the evening. Now we share this with you in case there are two people in your family who have jobs where both need their space to verbally communicate with customers. In that situation, our Class A floor plan might be problematic for you. The fifth wheel toy oiler had two places for us to work. I would set up at the dining table and Daryl would work in a completely separate room in the garage which had a full table. So in the category of working from the RV, we both agree the fifth, fifth wheel, wheel wins. wins. The next category is how about livability? In our Class A, we have one bedroom. We also have a pull-out couch in the living room, which provides some pretty tight quarters when we have guests. Also only has one bathroom. It's large, but it's the only one on board. And again, many Class A floor plans do have two, just not our floor plan. Our Class A also only has one door for entering and exiting. Our fifth wheel, it had two bedrooms. One in the very front of the unit, and the second in the garage, which actually had two beds that could sleep multiple guests if needed. It also had two full bathrooms, one in the garage and one in the front just before the bedroom. And throw in, just for good measure, two doors. Yeah, which is really convenient. So in the category of livability, we both agree that the fifth wheel, once again, wins. wins. The third category to discuss is maneuverability. For me, maneuvering the Class A is easier than the truck and the fifth wheel, especially in tight spaces like Fort Wilderness RV Resort. If you guys recall, when we took the fifth wheel there, we were actually off the sides of the roads almost on every turn. Now we made it and you can make it, but it was tight. Getting the 40 foot motor home in places, especially small places, has been much easier and even when we pull the trailer, I find that the Class A has been easier to maneuver than the truck and the fifth wheel was. And some of that's because with the motor home, there isn't that pivot point or that hinge between the truck and the camper, if you will. It's just one piece uh, to get in and get out. And I hope that makes sense. So in the category of maneuverability? The Class A wins. Now, how about the pros and cons of the two units when traveling down the highway? 
I'll speak as a passenger and then you can speak as a driver. Okay. While traveling in our Class A, we have access to our entire RV. The dining table, the kitchen, refrigerator, bathroom, and the bedroom. And when we stop, we never have to leave the RV. Even with the slides in, I can prepare a meal without any issues at all. Yep, and the motorhome works great when Clay has to handle a work-related video call. Uh, we just pull over and let her go to work. When it comes to driving the Class A diesel pusher, with its air ride, its quiet cockpit due to the engine being some 40 feet behind us, not to mention the amazing views you can catch through the large windshield of the motorhome. All of that makes the Class A motorhome a stiff competitor when traveling. With the fifth wheel, we had to exit the truck, open the door, and drop the steps. And once inside, if your slides are closed, well, we couldn't even use the kitchen. Couldn't get to the refrigerator or the dinette table. We only had access to the bathroom and bedroom, which sometimes that may be all you need if you're just looking for some rest. But if you wanted to prepare a meal, you had to open up the slides and get access to the kitchen area, which depending on where you've stopped, could be a little risky. And hey, sometimes even getting access to the fifth wheel could be problematic. Thankfully, that didn't happen often. And when driving the F-350 with the fifth wheel, I think it drove great. I mean, no complaints. Pretty much what you'd expect with a one ton or a three quarter ton truck carrying a heavy payload, but just not in the same category as the air ride with the Class A. But again, let me stress, it's not a bad ride at all. So in the category of traveling, the winner is the Class A motorhome. Class A. The next area is storage. One of the big reasons we even traded for the motorhome was storage. Yeah. In our Class A, we have eight underneath storage compartments, which has been so very useful for us as full-timers. Yeah, no doubt about it. And our fifth wheel, well, as the case with most fifth wheels, well, it came up short regarding the storage space with only one pass-through storage area underneath the bedroom. It did also have some limited storage in the very front where the battery and generators were located. So for storage capacity, the Class, Class A, A wins. wins. Well, how about fuel mileage? Good question. Our F-350 had a 48 gallon tank and we averaged between nine and 10 miles a gallon when pulling the fifth wheel. Our Class A, it has a 150 gallon fuel tank and averages between seven and eight miles a gallon. While the truck and the fifth wheel got better fuel mileage, the Class A with its 150 gallon fuel tank significantly reduces the number of fuel stops. I mean, we don't even really plan a fuel stop until we've hit about 600 miles. Since there's not much difference in the fuel mileage and because of the conveniences that the Class A provides with less stops, I award the winner, the, the Class, Class A. A motor home. <laughs> Yay. So, okay, let's talk about hauling toys. Yeah, in order to haul our toys in our Class A, we have to tow a trailer. And inside that trailer, we have the car, motorcycle, as well as many other things, actually. The fifth wheel, well, it was called a toy hauler for a reason. I mean, it comes with a built-in garage for motorcycles, kayaks, golf carts, side-by-sides, whatever, whatever you, you have. Yeah, yeah, whatever you want yeah. to put in there. On one of our trips out to Sturgis, we discovered that the garage could serve as a toy hauler and a bedroom. So we think when it comes to hauling toys, the fifth wheel, the wins. Fifth wheel wins. Let's talk about price difference. Mm. <laughs> While everything seems to be super expensive, the Class A is more than twice the investment than was the fifth wheel and the truck. You can also throw into the mix the maintenance cost of the Class A, which we found to be much more expensive than the F-350 and fifth wheel. So when it comes to price, the big winner is the, the fifth, fifth wheel, wheel. No, no doubt about it. So to answer the question of, did we make a mistake trading in the fifth wheel toy hauler for a Class A motorhome? Well, I don't think so. I do not have any regrets because in each there are pros and cons. Like I yeah. missed the veranda, but then again, if I wasn't that setup, I would miss, you know, the storage that I'm getting on the bus. So no, yeah. I don't have any regrets, do you? Yeah. No, I, and I don't think it was a mistake. And again, for now, the Class A works for us. And it really goes back to what I said at the beginning. And that is what's important to people when choosing an RV for us. Things like drivability, the convenience of traveling, the ease of maneuvering, the extra storage, those are the things that are important and we feel that the Class A serves us best in those areas. And that said, there are things that I missed about the F-350 and the fifth wheel, but that's to be expected. I mean, if we were back in that setup, 
yeah. I'd probably be missing things about the Class A, right. you know, the way it handles, and yeah. not even to mention all the um, the luxury yeah, things the amenities, are in, the amenities are in here. So yeah. we hope you enjoyed the video, and we hope it was helpful, and maybe even provided some insight if an RV is in your future. Yeah. Hey, to see more videos, click on one of those on the screen, and we hope to see you there. Until next time, be, be well, well and stay, stay safe. safe.